Hey, we're happy to welcome Jeremy Roenick. His book is JR, The Fast, Crazy Life of Hockey's Most Outspoken and Most Colorful Personality. Good morning. Good morning. By the way, I didn't write that, that part of it, but uh, I, I guess it's, it's, it's pretty accurate, I think. <laughs> <laughs> I wanted to start talking about uh, the lockout and, and your perspective on that. I, do you think the NHL is doing itself any, any long-term lasting harm by not uh, having... I, I think for sure when you go through lockout twice in eight years, you're going to lose you're going to lose a lot of uh, a lot of fans that have really put their stock in the game and really love the game. But I think hockey fans in general are the best fans, the most committed, the most uh, loyal. Uh, they'll come back, but they're going to come back a little angry. Uh, I believe when they, they get back, I think the NHL should do something to give back to the fans in some way, whether it's real charitable wise, each team. Um, Hell, if I was a, if I was an owner, I'd make one game half price or so, do something for the fans because there is a lot of damage going on. Hopefully, it ends soon. Can you understand? I mean, this was something that that got you in hot water years ago when when some fans said that they thought that mm -hmm. uh, hockey players were entitled. Entitled and or selfish spoiled, and spoiled. Selfish. And, yeah. Right, exactly. And I think, once again, I think probably fans look at it and think about that about both sides now, the owners and the players, and yeah. just think it, it, they can't relate to million-dollar arguments. No, they can't. And it's, it's weird being on the outside now, not as a player watching and hearing more of what the fans say. And, and it, it's a lot of the same, you know, selfish greed, all the things. But being around players and knowing their personalities and knowing how they feel about the game and each other and how they treat fans, it's not so much greed. I mean, it's a business, there's no question. You gotta take care of, of yourself. You're only in a, in a sport for a short period of time. You have to make sure your, your business is straight. But there's also something that's bigger and that's the game. It's the game of hockey that has to be protected. And I think the players really do appreciate it and want the game to be protected. Mm -hmm. They just, it, it is a business, has to be done. I, I just think that right now the owners need to give a little bit too, and that's just the players give, and we'll see what happens. Well, I mean, you, right in the title of your book, Outspoken. I mean, you've outspoken. You, you never shied away from controversy, never shied away from speaking no. your mind. Does the game have the characters these days? Does it need more characters? Does it need more players to step up yeah, and no be question. the Jeremy? No one? question. There, there is very, very little... Uh, um, personalities in the game. Everybody seems to be robotic in the fact where, but it, it's more brought on by the management. Management's like they they train you to, to stay in the lines, be very team oriented, don't put yourself above the team. It's about the, the team concept. But you do that, what it does is it makes the media's job so so tough. It, it, it really blands out the newspapers, it blands out the, the interviews. Uh, what makes sport great, whether it's controversy or whether it's honesty, it creates a buzz, it creates, um, uh, it creates debates, it creates arguments, and I was one that Pretty, well, was good at doing out, both. Just to, to continue on that, I, I think I know where you got it. <laughs> your outspokenness. Yes. Yeah. I mentioned this before the break, and this is uh, the first paragraph of chapter one. Please come to Boston, uh, if I may. When I was an 11 year old playing Pee Wee hockey in the Washington, D.C. area, I remember backing down from an encounter with an opponent and hearing a voice from the crowds yell, Get off the ice, you. Word I cannot say. Y yeah. Would be a synonym for cat. Yeah. Looking into the stands, I realized it was my mother. And shocking, <laughs> shocking. I, I knew exactly how my career was going to go and whether I had thick skin or not. Mm -hmm. And I literally stopped almost in my tracks on the ice. I looked up and my mom, with the, I'll never forget her face and I'll never forget the words that came out of her mouth. And uh, I knew I was going to have thick skin for the rest of my life. So it was character building. <laughs> it was character building. My whole childhood was character building. I. Um, <laughs> I had to walk home in the snow uh, two miles after a poor performance from my father, who really, who really dr drove home the 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 personality and the hard work mentality and and the team game mentality. And mm -hmm. uh, I talk, about, I really get honest in this book. And you know, my my folks are going to look at it and say, "Were we really that tough?" And I'll say. Yeah, you're really mm -hmm. that tough. How do you think the game has to evolve coming out of this lockout? Because you were saying there are not, not enough personalities, but there's also been a lot of talk about how violent it has gotten and maybe we need to step back. Yeah. And then from the fan side, I mean, even just here in Toronto, people complaining, it's too expensive. This whole negotiation, it's millionaires versus billionaires. How do you come out of this lockout uh, a different game? Uh, well, I, in terms of the, the ferocity of the game, these kids are so young, they're so talented, and it's a different game. Mm -hmm. I mean, when I came into the league, it was 
camp was there for camp and right after practice it was right to the bar and it was six packs and <laughs> now it's you know it's it's power shakes it's in the gym it's it's 11 month uh, season pretty much being ready these kids are machines they are fast they're strong they're talented uh, it's going to be hard hitting I think the respect has to come back amongst the players I, I think they just don't respect themselves enough or they don't think about somebody's well-being when they're going as fast as they are now as strong as they are today there's going to be injuries but um, you know in, in terms of the the finances it, it is an expensive sport there's no question about it but I, hopefully after coming out of a lockout they know that the revenue is going to continue to grow the the revenue share is going to be a little bit closer maybe the owners can do a little bit better on making it more affordable for people maybe that's their way of giving back after uh, a second lockout but it, it's tough times sometimes you have to adjust to tough times you half are price tickets yeah half least, price tickets you are candid in this jeremy why why now why did you want to tell the story in such a personal way uh you know I, I i've been asked for a couple years to write a book and and tell you the truth i was a little nervous and a little scared to do it i mean a lot for um personal reasons a lot to let myself out of what's really happened in my life uh, but I late in my career I came to I, I don't want to say I came to a Jesus but I, I reached bottom and humbled myself I was the biggest egomaniac in the world is for the first 15 16 years of what my was career bottom? Uh, bottom was nobody wanting me anymore bottom was not uh, taking care of myself bottom was doing the things that uh, you probably shouldn't be doing um, when you're a star athlete and uh, you know when you make the wrong decisions because y you think you're up here mm -hmm. and really people really don't care where you are it's it's how you're treating them and it's what you're saying it's what you're doing and I was doing the wrong things and when all of a sudden you're at the top and then you're at the nobody wants you anymore and you're fighting with your family you're fighting with your friends you're uh, you know it's alcohol it's gambling it's a lot of things that I found myself caught up in and I found myself caught up with uh, some of the great people in the game, like Wayne Gretzky. And, you know, after all said and done, you realize it was my fault. It wasn't their fault. It was, it was my clash of what I was going through ego-wise. Right. And, you know what, I think everybody should uh, wanted to know why I've been, because I've been such a public figure and so outspoken. And I, I think everybody should know why uh, I did it and why I was like I, what, like I was. And um, I, I'm still confident, but not the same guy that that played hockey well uh, it's uh, we're so great to, or we're so glad to have you here and it's a great book and hopefully inspirational to people because a lot of I times you know what you're talking about right now the fact that it's not easy to step back and look in the mirror and go oh that was my fault mm, it's <laughs> so. not it, it's not at all especially when your wife looks at you and calls you a lot of names which I put in the book so <laughs> I hope people laugh I hope people drop their jaw and say wow and I hope people look at it and say gosh what an idiot he was because Hopefully they learn from some of my mistakes. Thank you so much, Jeremy Roenick. Again, the book is JR, The Fast, Crazy Life of Hockey's Most Outspoken and Most Colorful Personality. It's 20 minutes.